Warm greetings from Narayana to all our viewers. Today on the occasion of National Epilepsy Day, it is my great honor to host this discussion on epilepsy, its causes, the myths that surround it, the frequently asked questions about this disease and the treatment options available. And joining me on this discussion will be Dr. Sumana Valadar, who is a consultant in epilepsy and functional neurosurgery at Narayana Health, Bangalore. He has done his neurosurgical training from Chennai and he has further done a fellowship in epilepsy and functional neurosurgery from Amrita Institute, Kochi and Cleveland Clinic, US. Sir, welcome. Thank you. Uh, so I'll just explain how we will be conducting this. I will ask you a few of the most commonly asked questions about this disease and uh, maybe you will be able to help our viewers understand this disease better. Thank you, Amrita. So our first question is, when is the National Epilepsy Day? And when is it celebrated in India? And what is its significance? Okay. So uh, National Epilepsy Day in India is celebrated on the 17th of November every year. The importance of celebrating National Epilepsy Day is because epilepsy is one of the very common brain disorders we see all around the world. World over, we have about 70 to 80 million people suffering from epilepsy. India alone, we have about 10 to 12 million people. That's about 1.2 crore people suffering from epilepsy. The importance of celebrating this National Epilepsy Day is to create an awareness regarding the causes of epilepsy, what you should do when a patient or a person is having seizures, what are the treatment options available and what are the do's and don'ts regarding epilepsy. So what are these symptoms of epilepsy? How can we as lay people, how can we recognize? Yeah. So. Uh, Epilepsy is a symptom uh, which has uh, varying uh, types of uh, presentation. For example, patients may have some stiffening of the hands and legs, they may have some involuntary jerky movements, they may have uprolling of eyes, they may have frothing in the mouth, they may lose uh, awareness of their surroundings or they may lose consciousness. So here what happens is a lot of People have a doubt that only when somebody is having this jerky movements, loss of consciousness and frothing, only then it is known as, uh, you know, somebody is having a seizure. And when somebody is not having all these symptoms, they may not be having seizures or epilepsy. Well, we need to be aware that even people who do not show all the symptoms, they may just have loss of awareness, they may just have a sense of fear and uh, they may just not be able to respond for a few seconds. Even that may be a symptom of epilepsy. So it is always better that we meet a neurologist and make sure that it, they are diagnosed properly, whether it is a seizure or it is not a seizure. Right. And say before we reach the hospital, if a lay person finds someone having a seizure, they suspect it's a seizure, what precautions should they take to help the individual? Okay. So for example, you are on the road or you're in a place and you're somebody, your colleague or your friend is having a seizure. So what should you do? First and foremost, do not panic. Then make sure that he does not fall and hurt himself. Take him to a place which is safe. Loosen his tight clothing if he's wearing some tight clothes. Make him lie down on a, on a bed and turn him to one side so that he does not choke. Then do not put anything into the mouth. And most importantly, a lot of people think that giving keys or some metallic objects can uh, stop the seizure. Well, it is not so. It, seizures generally stop on its own and then call for medical help. If that person is having seizures for more than five minutes, then it becomes an emergency and then we should take him to the hospital immediately. Thank you. So uh, I'm sure you must have had this question from patients before. But what are the causes? Because I'm sure many patients will say, "Was it why me? Correct. Why did it affect me? Can could we have done something differently?" Correct. So what are Correct. the causes? Yeah. For epilepsy? So most of the times we don't know what the cause for epilepsy is, but in a certain percentage of people, it can be because of head trauma. It can be because of stroke. It can be because of brain infections. A lot of children develop epilepsy when they have a perinatal insult during delivery and it can be because of infections, certain genetic causes, there are a lot of varied factors and certain drugs can also cause epilepsy. Alright, so how do you diagnose epilepsy? Okay, so the first and foremost thing is uh, we need to meet a neurologist, make sure that it is a seizure or it is not a seizure. We have to rule out whether it's a seizure or not. Next is uh, we do what is known as a EEG or an electroencephalography. 
ideally a video electroencephalography or a video EEG is the best. And then a lot of people require blood tests, some genetic workup. Coming to imaging, people will require either a CT or an MRI. Certain people may require some advanced testing such as a PET scan, sometimes a SPECT or a MEG scan. So you have had a long practice around epilepsy. So what are the myths that you've come across and if you would have some fun busting them for our audience yes, also? Yes, yes. So there's a lot of myths with regards to epilepsy. People think it is because of black magic, especially in the rural areas, they think it is black magic or some demonic disorder. They think it is a mental illness. It is not so. Okay. So what these patients need is a proper evaluation and proper treatment. There is a lot of uh, myths regarding these uh, patients having epilepsy, unable to get a job, unable to get married. They think that uh, children born to these uh, people having epilepsy will uh, also have epilepsy. Well, we need to find out the cause, make sure that they're treated adequately. And most of them will be able to get married, have children, get a job and lead a near normal life, provided they take treatment properly. All right. So this treatment, as you're speaking of, sir, what are the treatment options available? For yeah, epilepsy. all right. So, when somebody is diagnosed with epilepsy, the first line of treatment would be medications. Okay, almost two thirds of them will respond to medications, either one or two adequate dose of medications, and they do very well. It is those one third of patients who do not respond to medications, and these are the people who will require a detailed evaluation by a team of people and a further uh, investigations in the form of a higher uh, in a MEG or a SPECT or a PET. And then we can also think of surgery in these patients who do not respond to medications. Okay. So, you brought up the point of surgery in epilepsy. That brings you to my next question because usually we associate epilepsy with a neurologist, Correct. with medical management. Correct. So, what is the role of neurosurgery in epilepsy and is it safe because there's a lot of yes. fear attached yes. true. to a true. surgery? True. Okay. So, as I said, the two-thirds do respond to medications will not require any surgery. It is those one-third who do not respond to medications and these are the people we evaluate further. And if we are able to identify an abnormal area within the brain, these are the people where we advise surgery to either remove that abnormal area or to disconnect that area from the surrounding uh, structure so that the seizure does not propagate to the other areas of the brain. Coming to the aspect regarding safety, epilepsy surgery is nothing very different from any other brain surgery. The mortality or the morbidity is no way different from any other brain surgery. And off late, these surgeries have become much safer and these patients get a good uh, treatment and uh, surgery without much of complications. So there is another point I wanted to say is now that with advancement of uh, uh, surgery, the field of surgery, and we also do what is known as awake craniotomy. Okay, so uh, awake craniotomy is where the patient is deliberately kept awake. Okay, he is talking and he is moving his limbs in spite of we operating on the brain. He does not have any pain because brain per se does not perceive any pain. Okay, and how does this awake craniotomy help in doing surgeries? Well, we can actually take out or uh, resect the abnormal area boldly with the patient talking so that the patient does not develop a deficit. It's usually for those areas where which are you know very close to the motor area or that is the you know hands and the legs or the speech area. So when we are resecting the abnormal area we don't give a deficit to the patient. How does this help? Well uh, it helps in better seizure outcome and also a shorter stay in the hospital. Alright, and this awake craniotomy, when you say the patient is awake, you mean they are aware of the surgery? Yes, yes, they are aware, they are awake and they are fully conscious during the surgery. We only give local anesthesia so that they do not perceive pain during the uh, initial stage of the surgery. Once we are inside, operating inside, they don't perceive any pain at all. So, awake craniotomy is one of the advances that we yeah. have made in the neurosurgical field. Yeah. Can you just tell us a little about the other advances? Advances, fine. So, uh, with regards to advances in diagnosis, we have uh, uh, you know something known as MEG magnetoencephalography, and then we have something called a stereo EEG, where 
instead of the scalp electrodes where we put on the scalp we put electrodes inside the brain to identify the abnormal area which is causing seizures that way we will be able to identify a very precise area which is causing the seizures and then we may be able to resect it with regards to surgery there are a lot of newer advances in the form of vagal nerve stimulation we also have something on as known as deep brain stimulation which is similar to a cardiac pacemaker we put an electrode inside the brain with a pacemaker which is kept on the uh, anterior chest wall and this gives a continuous electrical impulse which helps in aborting or redu reducing the amount of seizures right so the next question is can we provide all these services here in narayana health city bangalore yes what i emphasize on treating a patient with epilepsy is teamwork it's always a team of people it here we have adult epileptologists we have pediatric epileptologists we have uh, uh, neurosurgeons we have neuroradiologists we have a neuropsychologist we have a rehab team so the whole team comes together whenever we are thinking of surgery for a patient we all have a pre surgical conference for every patient who undergoes surgery for epilepsy we discuss we discuss the pros and cons and only when we are convinced that surgery is a good option for them do we go ahead with surgery so here at narayana we have the whole team of uh, uh, doctors who, who who are necessary for treating a patient with epilepsy we also have all the equipments required for uh, treating a patient and all the the latest microscope and the facility for stereo eg also thank you so one last question for you would be for all the patients out there with the diagnosis of epilepsy who are leading as much as possible they're trying to lead a normal life what are the tips you can give to them so that they can manage the disease better lead as normal a life as possible and be safe to themselves and everyone around correct them? correct correct first and foremost take appropriate treatment from a neurologist do not uh, you know go to temples or do not go to quacks and get treated so first and foremost is proper treatment then take medications on time do not stop any of these medications without a doctor's advice then a few things that you need to be very careful about one is do not go for swimming no driving two wheeler or four wheeler and uh, no fasting and uh, make sure that you get adequate sleep with these precautions you should be able to live a near, near normal life so any correlation with any of the uh, social uh, substances of abuse which oh yes okay. yes avoid alcohol avoid alcohol avoid substance abuse and certain medications or over dosage of medications can also cause seizures so avoid all that well thank you so much this has been very illuminating for me also and yeah. i hope to the audience as well yeah so we'll call it a day here thanks a lot thank for you. joining us thank you amrita thank, thank you, you.